on every occasion that I have been out and photographing, or at least tried to photograph, I have most likely failed and I have learned a lesson and I have gone home and I have tried to iterate what happened and try to understand what happened and come up with a solution and then try it at home, uh, like dry run everything from home or from the balcony and see that the solution actually works. And I have had tons of these issues. And this video is me trying to share my learnings. So hopefully you won't have the same problems that I had. A while ago, I was talking about how I thought I beat the system with astrophotography uh, to have something more to do uh, in aspects of photographing uh, during the winter months, which are very dark here in Sweden. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> what I didn't realize is that this country is really, really cloudy. So a starry night or a clear night is uh, really unusual as, uh, as I have experienced so far, uh, meaning that I have roughly two or three nights per month tops on average to actually go out and photograph. And this means that uh, it's really no margins for error when you're out on the fields. And unfortunately, all I have had are errors. So my setup, as you might or might not know, is a simple DSLR, an Astro modified DSLR uh, on a Star Adventure uh, 2i and it's guided and I use the ASI Air Plus to control everything through my iPad or through my iPhone. And this entire setup has been really messy. So everything has boiled down to a checklist that I have, which is basically a 10 step checklist that I follow every time I start astrophotographing or start setting everything up. And this checklist has done everything for me Right now I have tried it two times or three times and, I, and it has worked flawlessly all three times. So if you have a same setup as I have, you might find this useful. So here are the 10 steps that I do to prepare for my astrophotography session. Step number one is that I level my tripod, meaning that I just center my air bubble and making the tripod stay as level as possible. This is important when you uh, polar align because when you move up and down, it's just going to go up and down or left or right. Step number two is that I have everything on the tracker that I'm going to use for the session. So I just roughly point my gear in the direction that I'm going to photograph during the night. And I just test everything to see that it's leveled, that the counterweights are in the right position and that, not, that nothing happens during the night, that at some point uh, it, the camera is going to be too heavy and start falling off and you're gonna just lose the tracking. So I'm just checking that everything is leveled correctly and I'm just repointing everything back to Polaris and start step number three. All right, so step number three is <laughs> setting the focus on the main camera. I have made this mistake several times. I have forgotten to put a focus on the main camera and I used that to polar align later on and that just messed up my polar alignment so bad and I couldn't understand why. So make sure that your main camera has focus at this point because that's what you're going to use when you do your polar alignment later on. Step number four is to make a manual polar alignment. Now I have the Star Adventure 2i and that has a small scope within it and I can just 
look in that scope, use an app to find the place where Polaris should be in that scope. And then I just make a rough manual adjustment uh, or not rough. I make as a good manual polar alignment as I can in this step. Step five is to do the polar alignment using the ASI Air Plus. So I'm not going to go into details on how I do that, but now the focus is set and I can start my polar alignment with the ASI Air Plus. And if I've done the manual step pretty good enough, then it's not that hard to do the fine tunings using the ASI Air Plus. Step number six is find the target. And so I'm just, again, taking everything, rotating it to exactly the spot where I think the target is. And since I already tried the, uh, the balance beforehand, I know that I don't have to, I won't have any issues with the balancing or fibbling with the counterweights at this stage because I don't want to mess up the polar alignment uh, at this point. I am really, really careful not to do any hard or sudden movements at this step. I'm trying not to uh, like lock everything down as much because the balance will handle that for me anyways. So I use the ASI Air Plus at this point where I use the Star Atlas and I use plate solving to just find my target and frame it up exactly as I want it. Not rotating the camera too much because it's not symmetrical with, due to the guide scope. The entire setup is not symmetrical and once I have tried and balanced everything beforehand, I don't want to mess it up too much. So that is one weakness that I have at this point and I will probably try to solve that during the summer months here in Sweden since there won't be any photographing of the stars anyways. Step number seven at this point is that everything is framed up. I have a correct focus. I might recheck the focus at this point just to be sure. And it's time to start guiding. And before I just start the guiding, I have to check the focus of the guide scope. This is also a good step to do because I have forgotten to set, because I have forgot to set the because I have forgotten to set the focus correctly and the guiding has simply doesn't work. Has simply doesn't work. Step number seven is to make sure that the focus of the guide scope is still okay. Step number eight, and this one is important, uh, is to wait for everything to settle. Once I have set my guide scope focus, I have started guiding, I'm just waiting for like one minute or something and looking at the graph to see that the guiding is working and it's working properly. Step number nine, I take a test exposure. Now I have a small trick here. I'm not using preview at this point. I am using auto run, but only with one single frame. And that is because auto run for me is set to save the images in camera whilst the preview doesn't. So I just don't want to waste a three or five minute exposure at this point uh, in case everything turns out perfect, which has been my case for the last two or three times. So it's just, I just don't want to waste a good frame. And that leads me to the last and step 10, which is to just start the outer run and enjoy your light frames. So this was my 10th step program for succeeding in astrophotography using the setup that I have. And this works really good for me. I still haven't tried it too many times, but looking at the history that I have probably failed like 80% of the times that I've been out photographing and the last three times after all these learnings and this list that I have, I have succeeded 100% of the times. I feel pretty confident that this is a good list to have and hopefully this might help you as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. All right, bye bye.